Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Power Hour. My name is Monica Sikora, and today I have a great privilege of having my wonderful colleague, Claire Chaplin, who's not only a fantastic freelancer instructor, but she's also an amazing physiotherapist. So, hello, Claire, and thank you for joining me today. Hello, hi. Um, so Claire, there's a lot of questions that I have for you and they're all kind of based on trying to get to know you as a practitioner and I think that correlation that you have between physiotherapy and Pilates is really interesting and I know a lot of the people that will be listening to us um, probably are wondering how these two work together. So especially maybe in your experience, because naturally you are a physiotherapist and you're a Pilates instructor, do they vary massively? Do you tend to work together between the two disciplines? How do you work between the two? Yes, yeah, so it, um, they complement each other quite nicely. Obviously, it depends on the patient case, but um, how I sort of got into the Pilates um, way of working is um, obviously through my physiotherapy um, uh, career I've worked um, in the NHS and we used to do um, lower back pain, pain classes um, so it would be like a six-week program of lower back pain exercises and uh, they could be people that've had surgery or just back pain they've seen a physiotherapist and then they needed a little bit more to um, make sure that the pain doesn't come back and they're they're strengthening up their core and getting good movement really and improving movement patterns and uh, which will be good for injury prevention again and so they don't keep coming back so um so that's how I got really interested into it because I found that people did get a lot better mm. and uh, really benefited from it and uh, it could be life-changing as well so um I, I um, then started looking at the um the Pilates route really and looked at more the rehab side of it so mm. So how does the Pilates from a rehab side differ from the just commercial Pilates um, that you would do? So say if I was to go and do a normal Pilates class versus if I was come to see yourself, um, is it, do you use more for, of your physiotherapy background? How does that differ? Does it differ at all? Yeah, so, um, well, I um, obviously have studied as a physiotherapist um, and then I did the Australian Physiotherapy and Pilates Institute um, courses, level one, two, three um, mat work, um, which means I can be a, a physiotherapy-led Pilates instructor. So um, it's uh, it's been really good, been um, practicing a lot with that with one-to-ones and now mm. doing classes um, and it's integrated really well into um, the one-to-one -one sessions especially when people get to a higher level especially the type of clients we often have um, sort of higher level athletes but then it can also help from the basic level if you've just had back pain and you're looking to get started so it caters for a wide variety of clients so I've found that the physiotherapy exercises that we would start with to manage back pain can then um, we can integrate the Pilates, the, the nice, slow, controlled movements, um, the breathing. It all helps with um, stress and improving um, pain management, really. So it's, uh, yeah, re really a great benefit. And I imagine it's also a really nice transition from not getting stuck too much in the rehab phase of your, of your journey, but trying to smooth that progression into should I say back into the wild and normal world so especially when you're recovering from an injury you know we we do tend to talk about how certain people get stuck in the rehab phase um, or worse they actually skip it make it really short and kind of rush into the outside world so I imagine that you obviously with your Pilates knowledge are able to guide a person in a little bit more structured and progressive way um, as a result of that um, I, I think I hope <laughs> Yes, yeah, so um, so the, go back to the other question as well with about um, the difference between the type of Pilates that I would teach and normal um, Pilates is that um, the the Australian uh, Physiotherapy and Pilates Institute is uh, breaks down the exercises from the thirty four original Joseph Pilates, um, mm -hmm. breaks them down into levels, so they're a little bit more achievable for people that um, have uh, had back pain or an, an episode of some sort of injury. It, it might not even be back pain; it might be a lower limb injury or even a shoulder injury, but working from the core building your strength in and out is is beneficial for most injuries really so um that's the main difference is that you can start at low level break it up and work your way through so it's sort of rehab based and then if appropriate they could go into a full pilates class for longer term management mm -hmm. 
So that must be really comforting for people to hear, because I know that a lot of people uh, that tend to be active and they get into injury, they very often struggle with the concept of the setback that's being caused to their progress in, um, in whatever the physical goal is. Um, so it's quite comforting to know that you can actually introduce Pilates way earlier in the rehab stages and you can in reintroduce some of that strength work into their routine. Um, so all the stuff that they worked for so hard before getting injured is not fully lost and they don't have to start from the beginning when they come out of it eventually weeks down the line. Um, so I think it's a really, really powerful mas message, especially for people that are struggling with the concept of having those setbacks or probably worse getting injured more frequently would that mean that we could prevent those situations so you know when we get people very often that say get um constantly injured through running would doing pilates and would really working through someone's strength and proprioception and all the aspects of the pilates work help them manage or help them prevent those situations uh, yes it can do because it can um what we'd usually do in, in my sort of area would be a full physiotherapy assessment so we'd find out where the weaknesses are or the problem in the gait cycle or um sort of find out where are the problem areas and then we can um be really specific on the exercises that we give so you know like if you go to an all classes class you'd have like a generic set of exercises mm -hmm. that you run through and the, the instructor would come around and check that they're appropriate for you mm -hmm. but we need to be really specific and clinically reason why we are giving you that exercise say if you're prone to getting a running injury like um achilles or if it's your glutes are a little bit weak or um whatever it is um we can mm -hmm. give you an exercise for that particular area or something that would work that area so uh, yes it could help in injury prevention that's amazing so it's it's fantastic it sounds like it's fantastic for the beginners but what i'm also getting out of it is anyone who's actually on the advanced end of the range um would benefit greatly because you are able to spot those imbalances and those weaknesses and anything that needs work on to actually accelerate someone's performance um, so in a way, yes, it's fantastic because obviously you can adapt the level to the level of a person uh, that's in front of you and you can start almost from ground zero, really. Um, then you also can actually work on those little cosmetic things that certain, and I know I'm guilty of that and I know a lot of people that I train are guilty of the same thing when they've especially been doing a routine for years. Um, you get a certain level of almost, shall I say, arrogance to you where you think to yourself, I'm good. <laughs> I got it all sorted. And there's, you know, I'm, I'm fit, I'm strong, and I'm able to cope with anything. But actually, if you strip it back to basics, you'll probably find a good amount of things that you can easily work on that you don't. Yes, definitely. Uh, there's a lot of um, relationship with um, muscle slings as well. So uh, mm. crossing across uh, the back, the front, the side. It, so it might be you keep getting a recurrent shoulder injury and your glute on the opposite side is a bit weak or some sort of thing like that that you haven't quite, that might take like a therapist to really dig in to find out where that is. And then we can give you exercises to focus on that to help sort of the overall functioning of, of your body. Um, and then longer term, we could then pass you over to the other the Pilates instructors for like the long-term management really and, and an injury prevention. Mm, that sounds, that sounds amazing. So is there any, well, I don't want to use the word trend, but is there any common denominator in the uh, clients that you're seeing? So do you tend to see, uh, is it a whole range of a full body problems that you tend to deal with or do you have any special area um, that you tend to focus on or is it just people from all walks of life? Yeah, it's usually a, a vast array of things people come in with. Uh, we obviously um, can tell people whether we would find it beneficial or, or not, um, depending on their condition. But generally, some sort of exercise is good on a regular basis anyway. So um, it's got to be something you enjoy. Um, so we try and link up with what would fit, benefit them clinically and what they'll enjoy. And um, I think it's nice actually with the class environment as well, because it's like socially nice. You're working with other people. You've got that motivation going on as well. And and I think with physio, sometimes we'll be like, go and do your exercises. And people are like, oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> so with the class, there's someone there to make you work for that hour and, uh, and really build on any fatigue that might be muscle fatigue. You know, you could do five repetitions and that's not going to be enough. But sometimes you need to, someone to do, you know, those three sets with you, 15 reps, really work it and, until you feel that burn and make sure you're doing it properly. <laughs> so, uh, there's lots of benefits from, from having that one-to-one -one or, or class um, input. 
that um, you're just scared of everyone who was trying to get away with not working out <laughs> during the class. She's watching you. She will okay, not then, let yeah. you get away. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're not doing the exercises. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, I know. I know that this is actually uh, probably a. Um, difficult question to answer but is there anyone that is not suitable for this type of uh, pilates training so obviously i know you're dealing with all sorts of different injuries you deal with people coming back from uh, from surgery from injuries um are there any red flags for starting pilates is any um level of um rehab rehabilitation or any phase of rehabilitation a no-no for including pilates in your uh, process yeah that's a really good question and um, what we usually do is advise that people have either um, a session first of all just to um, go through their medical history find out that it's best to have a diagnosis if you are in pain or you have got a problem it's definitely best to get that assessment first mm. before entering into a class um, or either from a therapist or a doctor or um, or some of the other pilates instructors have their own checklist to make mm -hmm. sure that their level of so um, of pilates is is okay to do um, i'd say there are some specialisms so if you're um, pregnant or postnatal you probably want to look for a specific class for that which we do offer um, with uh, with Olga so that's great and um, and also if you've got sort of osteoporosis you might just want to again have a, a more specific tailored um, uh, group for you um, but yeah best speak to the practitioner or, or instructor instructor let them know if you do have any particular medical um, conditions and they'll be able to um, let you know if you can still do the class, but you might just need to have some adaptations and they can keep more of an eye on you. Um, mm -hmm. For example, some exercises you might not want to do if you're lying on your tummy or lying on your back, depending on the condition. Um, so it's, it's quite a, a wide area. Not that there's loads of things you, you can't do it for, but you just want to have that checked first just to make sure. Mm. And I think you touched on a really important part, actually, which is um, people's uh, adherence to the exercises that we tend to give them, right? So physiotherapists, trainers, osteopaths, we all tend to give some form of a homework for our clients to do, because it's incredibly important that, you know, the uh, half an hour, hour or two hours in a week that they see us is not the only time that they're working on the things that technically and usually um, are long-term standing conditions or long-term alignment issues. Um, so I wonder if you do see the difference in people that you just give the exercises to versus the people that come to the classes. Do they tend to get better results? Or do they tend to be more consistent with their workouts versus the people that just been given exercises and hoping <laughs> that they would stick to that routine? Oh yeah, definitely. A hundred percent. You can tell a hundred percent. You can, um, cause we have what we call objective markers. So we'll, if we, um, say we do some tests with people, we find out what their problem area is to begin with and we'll monitor that through. So whether it's a weakness in an area, uh, a range of movement issue, a functional movement that they want to be able to do, whether it's something gardening or standing on one leg even, it could be anything, um, we'll have that marker. So we'll tell if, if people are improving, then we know that we've, we're on the right track and they're doing it. If they're not and uh, <laughs> they're still wobbly and they still can't balance, they probably haven't been practicing their balance. Or <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we'll have little movements to practice and, and definitely um, within, I mean, it takes sort of like it can take eight weeks for sort of muscle mm. strength to build up normally with our classes we did them for six weeks blocks but that was in the NHS a bit more limited but then um yeah I'd say six to eight weeks you want to give it a good try to really see the benefits from mm -hmm. at least but then you'll start to enjoy it you'll feel more mobile <laughs> yeah it's, it's good actually I think um if I may ever give anyone one advice when it comes to workout stick to it for at least eight weeks uh, because I think during the first eight weeks, first of all, it's a change to your routine. So you'll go through peaks and valleys and, and certain days and certain weeks will be better than the others. But to really start noticing different, the difference, both mentally and physically, that eight week spot is quite, a, quite usually the sweet spot when you also realize all the work is paying off and actually I can achieve way more. So that motivational, from the motivational side, from, from the actual um, progression side I think give something a go for eight weeks properly if it's not for you it's not for you but I can almost guarantee you <laughs> you'll probably be more likely to, to see the results and most importantly stick with it and make really long-term life changing say uh, changes so it's really um it's really an interesting conversation to have and I think is there a 
is there a universal volume that you would advise people to have? So say for a person who is a complete novice, not really having any routine um, and obviously coming back from, from the injury, so they now need to work on their strength. Um, what would be the sweet spot for them to, to do the Pilates classes or to work out per week? Yeah, it's also always good to um, get guidance from if you are seeing a therapist. On it depends on what stage you are at your healing. So if you're quite mm. acute or whatever your injury is, if it's quite swollen, then you'll, you'll be able to do a little bit less. But then, so for example, if you had a swollen ankle, but you're working your core, we can work around that. So there's no sort of you don't have to wait for that. That you, yeah. there are ways around that. Um, but if it's a back problem and it's it's a bit sore and it's acute disc, again, you might just need to sort of manage it a little bit first. So it depends where you are in that stage. Um, mm -hmm. But a therapist can guide you, or the instructor can guide you um it's hard to say because you do want to keep it sort of um you want to practice and then practice again quite soon um mm -hmm. with ideally with someone watching you so because you get compensation so you think you're doing i do the same you think you're doing it right and then someone comes along and just moves you and you're like oh my god that's so much harder than i wasn't doing it <laughs> so it's really good to have that one-to-one uh, -one or class interaction with someone to correct those imbalances especially while you're learning the moves and so you make sure you're doing them correctly. So it's probably good to do them a couple of times a week, maybe, if you can. Yeah. Uh, once a week, even. Um, just I probably wouldn't want to spread it out much more than that, because then you forget what you've learned in that yeah. week. Um, so yeah. Especially, I guess, people coming back from injury, you know, when they're working um, on bringing strength back into the area and then over, overall back into their body. I guess smaller, more frequent chunks would work better. Um, than just the one session a week where you kind of, you know, work for the whole body. I guess that that practice, that frequency would make a difference. Yes, yeah. And sometimes we've, um, with um, obviously consent of the patient, we've um, videoed us teaching the exercise so they can get it out and look and see, oh, that was that point. I need to make sure my hip doesn't drop there because it's a lot of information sometimes. You'd leave the mm. journey, but that's quite a lot of information to remember how to do the exercise as well. So that's been quite beneficial as well that people can practice just a couple of those exercises at home. Um, not the whole hour at home, but <laughs> just a couple, yeah, like you say, every other day or every day. Mm. And I think that's that's the key, isn't it? Because because we all we as exercise professionals, we assume that everyone knows the cues that we want to give them. And if we pr show an exercise or if we just educate a person once, that kind of sticks. And it really is far from, um, mm -hmm. you know, for a person especially who's never ever done this type of exercise or simply actually is struggling with activating specific muscle groups, um, getting it right without a supervision, at least for those initial stages, is almost almost guaranteed a failure <laughs> i think throughout my career i've uh, i've done that in the past where i put way too much trust trust in people and just assumed that they absolutely knew what i was talking about uh, and we still had to go back to the very basics every single time we saw each other so what you're saying is i think really important is that if you straight you know if you have an area you need to work on whether that's weakness whether that's post injury um you'd can't have too much of a trust of your <laughs> own body and and just the memory of that one time you spoke about it with the practitioner you do need to make sure that you have all the tools to constantly um get the right alignment the right positioning the right range of motion and most importantly the supervision as well so <laughs> yeah it's probably like a friendly fun way as well so it's not too yeah. we're not too strict though <laughs> so we'll, we'll demonstrate we'll explain why we're doing this we'll demonstrate and then often i'll show the patient this is where i want you to be and um, this is the type of movement um, and then i'll show them a couple of times and then i'll stand away and like okay you show me do it you show me how you're going to do it at home and sort of so, so it's signed off that yeah no that's great you've got good quality so it's all about yeah. quality a quality movement it is, isn't it? Because you can do hundreds of repetitions and it's still not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. let's do a few really good ones. <laughs> They're going to get the muscle working. <laughs> so is there, um, I think, one, one another tricky question. So just uh, tell me when to stop. <laughs> is there anybody areas that are particularly um, challenging for clients to rehab? So obviously we talk a lot about the lower back pain because of the connection with the core and Pilates is particularly fantastic for that core stability and strength. But are there any other areas that are not immediately obvious um, to, to us that are still able to be rehabbed and progress through Pilates? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. 
I think it can cover a lot of things. Again, I think with them, with therapy and Pilates, everybody's so individual. Every patient and client is individual. So we try and make it specific for them. Um, I think is, is really important. Um, so I, it's hard to say because someone that might come in with a shoulder problem, they might have something else going on as well. So it's um, often we try and treat the whole body. Um, so we're not just focusing on just the shoulder and we've left out something that was really blatantly obvious. Um, mm especially within the rehab setting as well. So I'd say it's hard to isolate an area, really. I'd say uh, we try and look at the whole body movement and how the whole body moves and improve all of that function. Um, yeah, so I think it's hard to pinpoint one in particular. I think the whole body moving and, and analysing that and then fixing that will, uh, will help, help everything. One question that I did have from, is a genuine question from one of my clients, can Pilates help with the neck posture? Yes, definitely, hundred percent. Mm. Very important for pretty much everyone listening to us because yeah, the amount definitely. of time <laughs> that uh, we work on so many other parts, and yet we still, especially with obviously how we live our lives, and it's quite you know inevitable that we will be slunch forward or looking forward quite a lot in our days. And you see even more and more young people um, with that tilted forward, that pushed forward chin, and a lot of neck and headaches. Uh, so neck pains and headaches that result of that, from the tension here. So can we correct that position? Can you, can you retrain the body to hold that neck and head position in a better alignment? Yes, definitely. And again, it takes sort of repetition, a bit like we were saying about the Pilates. You want to do it for a, like a program of a number of weeks to practice it and practice it in your own time as well. Um, I have seen a lot of um, clients in clinic with, which have got um, shoulder pain and neck pain from laptops from working from home at the moment in a sort of current situation and they're all sort of curved over like this so I'm doing a lot of exercises in prone um, hands up and trying to get them to extend back a little bit obviously only if they're appropriate and I've assessed them obviously first mm. of all. lots of deep neck flexor exercises to work the deep muscles that support the neck and also generally from the core you want to build your strength and stability from the core and then the rest will follow even just a simple little tip just lifting the sternum um, mm -hmm improve your overall posture your shoulders are back then your back's not as arch so that's a little tip that i'll give people I was say, i'm just sitting here going like okay okay yeah. <laughs> hope she's not seeing me readjusting my position <laughs> <laughs> so just even without going into the pilates detour of um holding engaging your core finding neutral and squeezing your shoulder blades back into the back pockets uh, even just that lift will just um improve the overall posture and then pilates wise there's a load of exercises and progressions that can help um your back and neck and, and improve that i'd be a whole day though if i went through them <laughs> i'm not gonna make you do it <laughs> saying that next episode <laughs> we're gonna just do a full body workout um it's really interesting to actually talk to you about this because i think uh it's, it's an incredibly important message that um, speaking to other our fantastic Pilates instructors before, we, we try to touch on the same subject, which is Pilates classes are more than just a workout class that you do and forget about uh, when you leave and close the door or shut your laptop. It's really just a question of re-educating yourself about all different alignments of your body, of the areas that you might not be necessarily physically aware of that were a problem or cause a problem. Um, and taking all that knowledge in your day-to-day -day life. So what you learn during that hour is not about just you having a workout and forgetting about it. It's training and educating yourself on how to better sit, walk, what to do if you start experiencing discomfort or tightness. Um, so that is a huge value that I think cannot be missed when we talk about Pilates. Because um, a lot of the times I think Pilates, you know, has that um, tendency of seeing this beautiful women in lycra with big balls and you know and they just do hundreds and it's just so much more than that and I think that that message is the one thing that I never want to get lost um, is that it's so much more than just a workout it's an education about your body it's an investment for a long term better body more optimal position and a better mental and physical well-being. 100% yeah I totally agree and there's lots of specialisms like we've been looking at um, so from the most basic then we've got um, Pilates for runners we've got the postnatal and the antenatal and um, you could have it for cyclists you could do any sort of sport really related so they can go from anything from beginners advanced um, to advanced so uh, there's, uh, there's, a, there's something for everyone really um, human movement is so important to keep mobility and strength 
that it's a good place to start. I mean, when I, from my training, I've, um, some of the exercises for mobility I do just between clients, because you get a little bit stiff sometimes working on oh, yeah. working at the desk and a couple of those, they've been life changing. I'm like, I've got to do these, people think I'm weird, I'm doing them, but they feel great. So, <laughs> it's yeah. fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. I, th yeah. I think if you, if you let your body, if you listen to your body, you really realize your body wants to move. So I fidget all the time. And I've noticed that even probably during this conversation, hopefully not all of it is caught on a camera, but I just constantly move and I, I sit on a Swiss ball. So the move is constant. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, if you let your body move, you notice that it wants to get in all those awkward rotations and different positions because we're not designed to just sit in one place for enormous amounts of hours in a day. And this is what very often cause long-term problem for our clients so retraining allowing that body to start moving a little bit more gaining that strength gaining that freedom of movement is so crucially important for their happiness and for the long-term happiness whatever your age is and whatever your physical ability is mm, yeah i agree a uh, pain and stiffness can really sort of bring down your mood can't it mm. You, you feel lethargic sometimes you don't want to move because you're going to feel stiff and you're going to feel sore but if you did had a nice program that you can do and that you enjoy then you feel like much looser much happier you just feel like the blood flowing a little bit better <laughs> you're gonna absolutely be yeah absolutely and the best part about it especially now um is that you don't even have to leave your house <laughs> the yeah. so the excuse of traveling the excuse of changing of getting stuff in the traffic all of those things are out of the window all you need is a little bit of a room in your house um comfortable clothes internet connection and you're good to go <laughs> yeah, definitely you can have a good workout and then just jump in the shower and you'll feel light looser and lighter and exactly the like posture does feel better like after you've done a class it, you t it tends to make you sort of like feel a little bit looser longer and lean yes. and strong so you just how many times have we heard i feel taller <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it is quite incredible, but it is. It's the same thing as uh, is the trick for the models, isn't it? I don't know that I know anything about it, but I heard <laughs> that uh, it is the question of lifting the chest and the chin, of expanding your back and actually showcasing that you have all that height. Uh, you can generally gain over an inch of height just by improving your posture. Yeah. It, is, um, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you here, Claire. Thank you so much. Um, for all of us who listen to um, our chat today, you can find Claire's classes on our fantastic online timetable. You can also book a one-to-one -one Pilates session or physiotherapy for that matter with Claire. She probably will end up making you exercises. <laughs> Exercising. Um, so thank you so much for joining me, Claire. And I'm really looking forward to having you here again. No problem. Thank you, Monica. Good night.